Hey, I want to talk about um, something that has always been of interest to me in this Rev 21 films. Uh, we've been watching in the news a lot of things going on. We've been seeing earthquakes. We've been seeing political dismay. We have been seeing religious dismay, the corruption and the crisis in our own Catholic Church. We have seen unprecedented persecution of Christians almost on a worldwide scale, particularly in the Asian continent. But not in, doesn't exclude the West either. Also plagues, plagues. A lot of things are going on, a lot of things, a lot of signs, and a lot of people wonder, what's going on? Why is all this stuff happening? Many people attribute it to just the, the environment going haywire, you know, because of what we've done to the forests, to the trees, to the sky, what have you. Other people contribute it to, yes, the judgment of God. You know, God is wrath, it's coming. And there's people with signs in the streets saying, big earthquake is coming and you must repent before uh, God's wrath falls upon the whole world. We've seen that. We know about those. But there's more. There really is more to this. Jesus told us in the Gospel of Matthew 24 into 25 that there would be calamities, that there would be earthquakes in various places. There will be wars and rumors of wars. <coughs> before his coming. You know, there's no doubt of that. St. Paul talks about the the son of perdition who would be who many theologians have identified as being the antichrist who would come during a time of great apostasy that would infect the church like a virus in the last days. We also heard also from the writings in the New Testament about the mystery of iniquity that is already at work in the sons and daughters of those who are disobedient. Paul talks to Timothy about how in the last days people will be lovers of themselves, disobedient to parents, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. We're seeing that in a worldwide scale. We see it in the media. We see it in our everyday lives. We see it in people we even know. There's a lot going on. So what does that mean? What does all that mean? Does it mean that the end is here, that we are in the end times? Let me try to break this down a little bit. Here's a news flash if you don't know yet already. The end times has been going on for 2,000 years. The end times officially began on the day of Pentecost when Peter began to preach to the people in their own common language, in their own languages. You know, the day of Pentecost was the day the church was born, that the ministry, the life-giving ministries of the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles, came upon Mary, who was there also in that room when it happened, and it just became this, you know, that's when the church began, right? So ever since then, we've been on a collision course with destiny as a body of Christ, as a body of believers, and there have been wars, there have been plagues, there have been natural disasters, there have been uh, the rise and falls of kingdoms throughout the ages, right? So it's what's happening now is not so different from what we've always kind of seen, and a lot of people would say that. As a matter of fact, Scripture also uh, teases with the idea that people walk around saying, well, where's the promise of his coming? This has been going on the way it's always been. And yet there's still something different. There's something in the air. You can almost, you can feel it. There's a different thing here now. It reminds me a lot of the opening words of when I, when I went to see Lord of the Rings, when it first came out in the theaters, um, those first words that you hear um, from the elf, uh, I forgot the name of the elf, the, the woman, um, you know, about how, you know, there's, there's whispers of a shadow coming, uh, you know, and I, it's, it's funny, Lord of the Rings was written by J.R. Tolkien, who was a very, very strong and for real Catholic, who, who understood what that meant and was probably inspired by the Gospels and the letters of the apostles to in, in conjunction with his writings and yet here we are we are at maybe perhaps the cusp of something grand that's going to happen throughout the catholic media world we've been hearing 
things about um you know priests talking about how they're uh you know being either if they're holding up to the truth they're being persecuted by their own bishops because the the bishops want to bend the truth and change things we're hearing things about our own pope rumors that he said that jesus wasn't fully god while he was human here on earth this came up in the amazon synod as well as the whole uh, pers- you know, uh, controversy with the Pachamama statues and and all of that chaos that happened then. There's there's a great there's a great time of confusion for our church. The rest of the world is looking on us as fools, especially the atheist world. You know, atheists have become more militant, become more aggressive in their approach to religion in general, you know, saying that, you know, all of it is just a farce and, uh, you know, there's no, there is no God, there is no this, there is no that. It's strange. I find it odd and I want to understand and learn more. And some people avoid books, you know, things like that, like what when Jesus talks about the end times or the book of Revelation or the book of Daniel or whatever, they stay away because they don't like thinking about that because for some weird reason, it does something to them. Personally, for me, I find the topic absolutely fascinating because we're talking about an end of uh, a day is going to come when all of this will end. OK, when this world that we know will pass away and God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. OK, and we will finally be with him fully body and soul. Okay, our bodies will resurrect and reunite with our souls. At the day of Christ's coming, there'll be a transformation. There'll be a rapture of sorts, like my Protestant brothers and sisters like to talk about. Um, except it won't be, you know, followed by seven years of this and this and that, and then a temple built in Jerusalem here and Antichrist coming over there. No, that's not how it works. There will be an Antichrist. Don't get me wrong. There will be a persecution. There will be an all-out final onslaught, you know. But the the actual focus shouldn't be on Revelation chapter 13. It should actually be but based on Revelation 20 when it talks about when Satan will be released from his prison and will attack God's people and surround the holy city, um, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle. If you read that carefully... That's pretty much the same thing in the form of the Antichrist that will come to do exactly that. Now, are we exactly sure how that, all that's going to pan out? A lot of people out there believe they got the formula. How Lindsay, uh, you know, Lahel and Jenkins. I can think of many other Christian writers out there who pretty much... Um, have a, a, a an idea but it's not really that that's not really the important part okay maybe we're asking the wrong questions maybe we shouldn't be asking when will everything end but maybe we should be asking why should it end and that lines up with another question that has the same why to it and the same kind of um concept why should my life end? You see, here's the thing. Even if the end of the world doesn't happen for another 500 years or whatnot, one thing will happen. One thing will end in just a matter of a few decades. In fact, it can happen tonight. This might be, you know, and that is our lives. Okay? I'm 50. I, I, you know, I'll be blessed if I hit 70. Okay? I'll be doubly blessed if I hit 90. But... We don't know the day or the hour of that moment. We really don't. Okay? Tonight, for all I know, this video could be our, my last video to you, and I'll die in my sleep. God forbid. You know? <laughs> no one really want an example of that. Why must it end? It's the same reason. Why must the world end? It's the same reason why our bodies must end, I believe. There's an intricate connection there between the physical creation and the spiritual creation. God made both to be perfect and both must undergo a purging both must undergo an end so that it can have truly a new beginning 
That's what I'm talking about. That's why this present age can't keep going the way it is. With all the stuff that we're seeing right now in the news, well, that we're seeing on CNN or on MSNBC or on Fox News or what, do you really honestly think, let's, let's really think about this, people. Do we really honestly think that it's going to keep going like that nonstop for another God knows how many hundreds of years without it getting progressively worse? It's been getting progressively worse. The earthquakes that have been ravaging Puerto Rico this past couple of months, I've never seen anything like that before. It was like, boom, one after another, one after another, one after another. And then all of a sudden, the Philippines got hit with it. Then upstate New York got hit with it. A lot of stuff going on. I don't know when this is going to end. I will not even try to speculate. But it is an exciting time to be a Catholic. It is an exciting time to be a Christian, to be a son or daughter of the living God. Because it is this is the time for us to stand up and proclaim the truth in our actions and in our words. In what we know and in what we can tell people in love about what it means to be a son and daughter of the living God, to come home to the faith, particularly the Catholic faith, because that is where the summit is. That is the true, that's where it all gels. That's where it all is fulfilled, okay? Jesus himself said that I will come to you. This is what he said at the Last Supper. I will come to you and I will be with you always until the end of the age. And he is with us always in the Eucharist, Okay, every Sunday when we go to Mass, we receive him, body and blood, soul and divinity. And he enters us and he becomes one with us, one flesh with us, the way him and his bride, which we are as church, mystically are to him, bride, united, one flesh. And that consummation is going to happen. It's going to happen if, if it happens well, after I'm dead, I, I'm still going to see it happen. I mean, how else am I going to get my resurrected body back? God willing, if I go to heaven, I, I really hope I do. You know, one must reconsider and reassess the, the these kind of questions in one's life. I'm not saying be doom and gloom about it and be thinking, oh, I'm going to die. All I'm saying is that we have been given a wonderful life and a wonderful opportunity made in God's image and likeness to make this real. All the issues with these wicked priests and the pedophiles and the, all, all of that is going to be purified and burnt out with God's fire. That's going to be a wonderful day when that happens. All of the persecution of every Christian on the planet Earth will be burnt out by God's fire. That's going to be a wonderful thing. Every abortion that has been committed will be undone because those babies are going to have their resurrected bodies back too. And that is going to be that purification. The earth itself, as in, in, the, in one of the letters of Peter talks about, will be dissolved by fire and that it will be um, consumed so that a new uh, earth, so that a new um, creation can come of it. No more war, no more hate. No more sin. Hold up. No more death. The last enemy to be destroyed. The ultimate enemy of God. Death will be destroyed. Death will die. As a matter of fact, here's some news. Death did die. On that cross 2,000 years ago. When Jesus was died on that cross, Jesus basically was saying to death, Okay, you're going to kill me. I'm taking you with me. And he did. And left him in the empty tomb. What a wonderful thing. And guess what? That is promised to us that we're going to share in that resurrection, in that truth. But we must want it. God is a gentleman. He does not want to take us by the hand by force into heaven. In order for us to go to heaven, we got to want to go to heaven. The only people that are in hell are the ones that want to be there. Because the only alternative to not wanting to, to being with God is hell. Hell is the absence of God. And if we're walking around pretending that God is absent in our lives now, thinking whether or not he exists or this and that, that, that then that's what we're going to want to have forever too. Okay. There is no second chance after death.
Scripture is clear on that. Church teaching is clear on that. As all of these things continue to happen in this world, as all of this continues, let us pray for our priests. Let us pray for our bishops. Let us pray for our families, our politicians. Let's pray for our friends who have left the faith that they may come back. I know I do. Let us pray for those who have stayed fast in the faith and that they continue. And let's pray that wonderful prayer of Jesus when he comes back, when we say it in mass, by your cross and resurrection, until you come again, we have been set free. Until you come again, we have been set free. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Ref 21 Films, if you like what you heard, prayerfully, please subscribe. Thank you. God bless.